Let's talk about UTSA. Let's talk about the Roadrunners. Meet okay. Meet. And they had a an his, a historic season. And historic. And? And historic. It, it, and historic. Historic. A historic. His, uh, a historic, historic season last year. Historic. Okay. Made their first bowl game. And... Everyone's everyone's wondering if this is the jump off, right? This is where this is the come up. This is when UTSA starts rising to the promise that we thought that they had when they first launched their football program. It when when they first launched their football program, go back and read. Go back and listen to what we were saying, not necessarily you and me because you were off in the nether regions of society. Yes. But with my clipboard. We have always been yes, with your clipboard <laughs> holding back baseball players. We have always been very bullish on UTSA's chances to be a contender in Conference USA because simply because of geography. This is not a this is not a, a real complicated algorithm that we've come up with to determine no. that UT, we're high on UTSA. Right. They are in a big city yep. with a lot of really talented football players yeah. who probably would like to stay close to their moms. Right. I mean that in the yeah. nicest way. They just you know you say hey. Why don't you play for your local team and be a star? Yeah. It's it's really easy to understand. Yeah. And so, UTSA makes their first bowl game, and it just seems like this could be the come up. This could be yeah. the real, this could be the moment where UTSA really starts to realize their potential. And so, I want to talk about the three things that they must do to continue that rise in 2017. Okay. The trajectory is a good one, but they got to keep it up year to year. This is an important season for UTSA. I think there are three things they have to do, absolutely positively have to do. And if 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 and if I may, I, I would say if you are a casual Texas football fan, if maybe you have a team already but you keep an eye on the other ones, maybe you're a Tech fan, maybe you're an A&M fan, maybe you've got a bigger team that mm-hmm. you're following, but you're sort of you're into football and you're into inter- UTSA is a fascinating program they right are. now, um, and one to watch this year because they could really have a great year for sure, for sure, and so. Here are the three things for me that UTSA must do in 2017. One, continue to protect the football. This seems silly, but it is so important to UTSA's identity under Frank Wilson. You look back at last year, and everyone talks about turnover margin, right? Mm. They talk about you want to take the ball away more than you give it away. Sure. And it's a good idea, right? but there's two sides of it. Because as we talked about yesterday, with um, as we talked about yesterday with um, TCU, TCU was a team that gave the ball away fair amount, and then they but then they they did not take the ball away enough. Right. UTSA last year actually did not. They I believe they took the ball away less than you than TCU. They were not this great turnover machine defense, okay? They weren't that's not what they were about. But what they did do is they took care of the football. They gave the ball away less than once a game. They ranked actually fourth in the nation in giveaways per game, which is incredible. Right. They gave away less than once a game. They have to continue to do that. They have to continue to hang on to the ball. Now, Part of that, and I want to look this up. Part of that is, I want to see. Uh, I want to see if we can uh, we can track it down uh, real quick on the fly because I just thought about it. Uh-oh. I want to see what their fumble luck was like, because as something we've we've mentioned, um, here you go fumbles. Uh, UTSA. This is you know, UTSA fumbled the ball seventeen times. They only lost seven. So. They were a little bit lucky on the fumble perspective, but at the same time, fumbling the ball only 17 times a year, I know that seems kind of high. It's actually not. I want to look this up. But they were, um, uh, they were. let's see, fumbles. 17 times is right in the middle of the pack. Okay, yeah. right in the middle of the pack. But Dalton Sturm took care of the football, didn't throw many interceptions. They did not give the ball away. They have to keep protecting the ball because... I don't think, especially when they're going to have to replace safeties, both their safeties, they're not going to take the ball away a ton. Mm-hmm. That's not in their identity. So they have to win the turnover battle simply by taking care of their own house. Number two, protect the quarterback. Now, if we're going to talk about what UTSA did not do well last year, 
They did not protect the quarterback well. Dalton Stern was running for his life. He was running for his life all season long, yeah. and even when he was running, he got sacked more than 10% of his dropbacks. Right. That's a ton. That's almost that's that's like fourth to last in the in in FBS. It's not great. Now, they are returning a fair amount of their they're returning a fair amount of their offensive line and they need that you they need that offensive line to step up, especially the tackle position. They're bringing back four of their five offensive linemen. They do need to replace a right a right tackle, but this is a a unit that should be able to gel and be better in 2017. They have to protect Dalton Sturm. Again, they're a more balanced offense, but they have to be able to protect him, and that has to be better because that is the kind of thing that can short-circuit your season. For sure. Is that if he's running for his life again, UTSA is in trouble. And finally, make hay in the middle. Here's what I mean by that. Take a look, if you will. Go ahead and just go into Google and Google UTSA football schedule. Okay. You're going to look up and say, oh, well, you know, there's some some interesting games. They open the year, um, they they open the year with uh, uh, with Houston, I believe, um, and they oh, I believe back to back they go Houston, and um, in fact, hold on, let me pull it up. Uh, they go back to back Houston and at Baylor. Not going to win either of those. Love you, UTSA. Probably not going to win either of those, right? Be fun if you did. Be fun if you did, but probably not going to happen, not. right? And then. At the end of the season, they're at Louisiana Tech. I think that's probably their most difficult conference, conference game, game yeah. is at Louisiana Tech. Okay? So you have these bookends of pro- <coughs> probable losses. Right. Okay? Of three probable yeah. losses. There is this soft, nougaty center <laughs> of the UTSA schedule. Okay? Where they should be, if things go well... They should be favored in nine straight. Okay. Okay. Southern at Texas State. Southern Miss, which will be tough, but you get them at home. Yep. At North Texas, which could be tough, but... It's going to be tough. Could be tough, but, you know, North Texas... Uh, UTSA was probably better than North Texas last year, and so probably favored, even on the road, or at least a coin flip, right? It's probably tough. I mean, Latrell's done a great job. Coin flip, I would say, is, is more appropriate coin. because I don't think that's going to be an easy one. Rice at home's probably, you know, going to be favored in that one. Uh, at UTEP. Going to be yep. favored in that one. At Florida International's weird, but probably favored in that one. Yeah, for at least another season. UAB, got to be favored in that one. Yeah. And then Marshall at home, got to be favored in that one. That's nine straight games where you can very realistic, you could very realistically expect them to be favored. Yeah. Got to take advantage of that. That's where you're going to make their hay. Because if you go into that last season, that last game of the year, at five and six, needing one more to get over the hump, mm. it's probably not going to happen Don't at Louisiana nice Tech. Spot. Yeah. And at that point, you're going to have dropped uh, at least one or two games that you should have won. Right. Look, we're very high on UTSA this year. We think that they could have a great year, but they've got to take advantage in the middle of that schedule because there's almost certainly, not almost certainly, because I don't think Louisiana at Louisiana Tech is, I don't think Louisiana Tech's some world beater, but right. I do think that they are going to have to make hay in the middle of their schedule to make another bowl and have that kind of next step year that they expect to have. Those are my three things for UTSA to do in 2017.